friends, welcome back to my channel. So I just finished filming a haul video of the damage I just did at Sephora today, and now I'm going to film a whole hair removal video for you guys. Don't mind the swatches on my hand. Did just get home from work today. I waited for the sun to set to film this part of the video because that sun was like, blaring in here and it was a bit intense. I'm gonna take my makeup off for this. You should always have a clean face before you do any kind of hair tweezing or anything on your face because when you pluck something out, you're opening up that hair follicle and you're giving yourself uh, a chance to get an ingrown hair which is basically like an infection in your skin from the hair growing funny. We don't want any debris or any makeup or anything on your face before you start this. The two devices I'm gonna be discussing in this video are the No-No and then the Tria. Before I get into the steps and what's worked for me and what hasn't and the review of those products, um, I just wanna give you a little background into what I've dealt with. <laughs> so I am Italian. And I had, and I, I will try to find before pictures, but I mean, I'm pretty sure that I always tried to hide them. Um, my, I, I mean, really, they were sideburns. <laughs> These on the side of my face, I mean, this is some of the hair that, like, normal hair growth would be, but mine literally came clear down to, like, here. And it was, like, just sh really short, really dark hairs on the side of my face. And I got them waxed for years and when I was younger I used to try to trim them and then when I was waxing and other things when they would start to come back it would be like it would look like razor burn almost on the side of my face it just was not a cute look and I didn't ever know how I was gonna stop it but I basically would just cover it up with makeup as you can see now I don't have anything there it's very smooth same on that side I did also used to get like a few hairs on my chin where I could kind of feel them like that and I would pluck them out. I would maybe get like one or two on my chin and I could get some on my upper lip here which now you see I don't have any. But also almost everybody has peach fuzz on their face, okay, everybody. So as you can see, um, I no longer have those issues and this is how I did it. So the first thing I got, um, my mom sent to me was this no-no and it came in this case with a little DVD instructional book and it came with these little, they're kind of feel like sandpaper and they're basically after you use this thing, you're supposed to go over it with those to kind of buff off the, the edges. The first problem I had when I got this are these thermal con tips that is what goes on here. This is basically there's a wire that runs right through the middle of this. Just a hot wire, that's all it is. And as you push this along your body, like right now it's not on, so as you roll this along wherever it is, this thing pushes down which makes the tip stick forward and then it's basically like just shaving with a laser beam. Laser beam. It doesn't work. It's not going to slow your hair growth at all because it has nothing to do with the follicle of your hair and that's where the hair growth comes from. And what it also does is it smells horrible. It smells like burnt hair because that's what it is, burnt hair. And it can, like, if you have, like, say, okay, even like your hand, I, I obviously wouldn't be shaving this, but see the little bump in your skin like that, like where I'm trying to move my thumb up? If you were going over an area that's not completely smooth like that, and there's a bump there, it catches that skin and that laser hot beam burns your skin and it can give you welts and depending on what level you set this to is as hot as it gets so i can't even turn this on anymore because i only use this literally i don't know i, I tried it out for a while but this stays on now i've tried like clicking on this once i turn it on and you use it a little it'll stay on so let me see if i can turn this on so when you turn this on yep there it is see it hear it see that light I'm not doing anything and it just stays like that and this is my second one that they sent me so I try to turn it off but do you see this how that tip comes forward and that thing is basically like Okay, 
The only way I could get it off was to pop this top off while it was off and now you can see the light, I'm going to turn it off. I hate this thing. It was, it's a waste. What that was good for, actually the only thing that, that this no-no was good for was peach fuzz on your face because peach fuzz is typically not dark so really a laser or anything else that's gonna target dark pigmentation in the hair follicle like that, it's not gonna work. So next is the Tria. The Tria, this is an at-home laser and basically this little head right here of it, when you turn this on, it's going to ask you to place it on what skin you're treating and there's this little sensor on the bottom right here and you actually just hold it on to wherever. So you push it on, you hold it on to wherever you're going and this is important, don't try to trick the laser because it needs to make sure that the pigment in your skin isn't too dark to treat, otherwise it will burn your skin. Pigment in the skin absorbs this light and that's what it kills the hair follicle. Now laser works best the lighter your skin is and the darker your hair the better laser works. There is a new cold laser out on the market that you can get treatments for but they are very expensive. This is $449 which is an investment but if you think about it in the fact of laser treatments are very costly um, and if you have regrowth you have to pay again to keep going back. This you can do as many times as you want once you make the investment. It charges with this little plug port in the back and it is important that it has um, space to breathe while it's charging because this fan will turn on it helps just keep it cool. So what I wanted to give you is a few facts and common hair removal myths. First, if you shave the hair follicle or if you shave anything, the hair does not grow back thicker. That is a myth. The reason people think that is a good example that I read is if you have a long tree branch that you're holding, it can be kind of pliable, right? Like as you get to the tip because it's flexible. If you were to take that tree branch and cut it into a few inches long, it's going to be a lot more rigid, right? Because it seems like it's stronger because it has less flexibility. It's the same thing with your hair. Once your hair is really long, like if you've ever gone and not shaved your legs for like, I don't know, a week and a half, two weeks or something, your legs feel soft all of a sudden, which like the first couple days after you shave, if you put your hand on them, it can feel really spiky. Now that's not to say you don't want your face to be spiky, you know, when someone's brushing up against it, but do rest assured that your hair is not coming back more thick. It is not coming back you know, amplified. Hair growth is controlled by the hair follicles under the skin. Hair follicles all have a growth cycle. So the ones on your head are different than the ones on your body. Your follicles are what determines thickness and pigment and growth. If the myth was true that your hair grows back thicker every time you shave, then people that have been shaving for years would be growing hair as thick as pencils. That doesn't make any sense. Your hair also is not darker. Um, that is a myth after you shave because if that was true again, people that have been shaving for years, everyone would have pitch black hair. Hair seems darker sometimes because when you have, like if you have a lot of peach fuzz on your face and it's been you know, getting light and everything, the, the sun gradually lightens hair all the time so it might seem a little lighter to you. Waxing causes hair to grow back lighter, more so than shaving because you're ripping the hair out by the follicle and every time you do that, you're weakening the hair follicle. The way lasers work is it beams a highly concentrated ray of light into the hair follicles. So the darker the pigmentation of the hair, the more easy it is for the laser to absorb that light. So what I would compare it to is think about if you've ever worn black outside on a sunny day, you're going to feel a lot more warm than the person that wore white because black absorbs that color. So same thing, if you have fair skin and black hair, you're in good shape. <laughs> laser hair removal should be a cinch for you. So I'm gonna get my geek on right now and if you're not interested in hearing about hair growth cycles or why it's important for multiple treatments, I will list below in the 
the description box a place where you can skip forward on the video. That way you don't have to hear all this jargon. One thing that you will see is even if you go to a professional for laser treatments is you have to go multiple times and the reason for that is because you have to get the hair in its proper growth cycle. So hair does not grow continuously. It grows in three cycles. The rate at which your hair grows varies by the individual and the length of hair growth typically depends on the region in which it's growing. So the hair on your head may have a growth cycle of several years while body hair may have an active growth cycle of a few months. Each growth cycle includes an antigen, a catagen, and a telogen growth phase. In the antigen growth phase, hair actively grows from the hair follicle. It grows about one centimeter every 28 days. On your scalp, it would actively grow every two to seven years. The next phase is the catagen phase. This is a short transitional phase in which the hair stops growing and the follicle shrinks. This phase lasts two to three weeks while the hair converts into club hair. They call it club hair because it's right before the hair sheds and the bulb has become club shaped. Third and final stage is the telogen phase. This is a resting phase for the hair before it sheds. Hair is dead and fully keratinized. Keratin is a substance that makes up the vast majority of your hair, your skin, and your nails. It's a fibrous structure protein. It's a tough non-water soluble protein. So when you hear people getting keratin treatments in their hair, they're basically adding extra of whatever's there to make the hair completely rigid and stiff. Typically people lose between 50 and 100 pieces of hair a day. In the telogen phase, as new hair begins to grow, the old hair follicle is pushed out and that's when you'll get that normal shedding. You'll see this every day in your shower, maybe in your brushes, sometimes on your pillowcase, but hopefully not too much. It is important to know these growth cycles because a laser is really only effective when hair is in the antigen growth phase, which is the first growth phase. The reason that's important is, that is its active growth phase. In that phase, that hair has the largest amount of melanin, which is the pigment, and can better absorb the light from the laser. Hair in catagen and telogen phases are less pigmented they don't absorb the light as well, so their growth is not impaired. A good example of this, I will show a picture um, while I'm talking about this, is I was doing my bikini line with the Tria, and um, I actually just like went down my stomach area too because I had like some little hairs there. And I have a tattoo um, around like this half of my belly button, and this got too close to that, and it actually my tattoo absorbed the light and it actually pushed the ink right out of my skin so this is kind of almost like um, like tattoo laser removal it's the same thought process as that the darker pigment in your skin is going to absorb the light and it actually kind of scabbed up and pushed out and that was painful I'll tell you just like a part of the star was like pushed out so I'll have to get that touched up so now I'm gonna take off my makeup and I'll be right back guys so I have removed my makeup I just tried out that new Luna that I'm actually gonna haul for you in the next video cuz I'm gonna put this one up first but it actually left my skin feeling really smooth so well, I'm gonna keep trying it and let you know so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I trim nose hair. This is a really embarrassing video, but I know all of us have issues with some of these things. So I'm going to get ready um, the Clorox wipes that I use to clean this. And also what I like to have on hand are Q-tips just to kind of go in and make sure if there's any trimming or any hair that I can up it. Now a nose hair trimmer works really well too, like a little electronic one. This is the Diane. This is the multi-purpose trimmer and the item number on this is DLA006. Um, they do have another one that is a nose hair trimmer that I found online. Um, that's the only one I could find online. So I will link everything below or at least list the name if I can't find this online. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on and then I'm just going to go around the inside of my nose. And that's it. Then I'm going to take a Q-tip and I'm just going to kind of go on the outside of where I just trimmed it to make sure, you know, I get any nose hair or anything out that's in. Then I'm going to take my Clorox wipes and you can use <clears throat> anything. I just want to disinfect this and I'm just going to wipe this down all the way around because I did stick half of it up my nose. 
that is really quickly just how I trim my nose hair and I like to do that I mean I don't have to do it very often maybe once a month um, it's because it's not like my nose hair grows like a weed but I do have it and if you don't trim it it's just gonna hang out there then moving on to the face okay so I mean I could have been like chops or something like my sideburns were really really noticeable I'll show a picture right here of a picture of me <clears throat> just kind of from an angle before I started doing anything about them and how they are now. So how you're going to remove those, I'm going to tell you using the Tria because that's the only thing I found that will work. First of all, um, now this may seem like scary, but you're going to have to shave them. And the reason you're going to have to shave them is because the hair needs to be short, flush with the skin for the laser to work, for it to absorb it. I have found that the longer the hair that you try to zap, the more painful it is. And this will be kind of painful. So what I did was, the first time I did this, was I um, took scissors, actually, first, the manicuring scissors, and I trimmed, I trimmed where I wanted them basically to stop at like so I just made the hair really short so I knew what not to take for the longer hair then I went through with a razor and I actually use I use guys shave cream on my legs and stuff too because I just feel like you get more of it for less cost anything that's labeled for women for some reason they charge more for so um, this is a shave gel it's just an edge shave gel I use and I would put it on there and you want to shave with the growth of the hair. Um, girls normally, I think most of us are used to shaving like up on our legs, like against the growth of the hair, and that can really irritate the skin. Since you're going and it's gonna be here, you don't wanna risk any kind of irritation. So you're gonna wanna shave down. Once that area is all smooth, what you're gonna do is you're going to turn on your tria. First, you're going to have to um, release it. See that little glowing red dot? Put it on your skin. First, you're going to have to um, release it. See that little glowing red dot? Put it on your skin. Then you hear that like doo -doo 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 charge. <laughs> then right here, it will show you the strength of it. So on a scale of one to five, I have it on four. I started off on three. Well, I actually tried one and I zap something, two, I zap something, three, I zap something. Three will, will, I've noticed, start to hurt, but four I'm good on, and I think I could even do five now, but I've really only done treatments on four, and I've been good. So what you'd want to do then is you're going to want to go and hold it on, and you can hear that beep as soon as you put it down. Like if I pick it up before it's done, you hear that wrong noise. So, And right there I felt a little sting, but it's not anything that's unbearable. I keep going then you hear that the fan kicks on so I would just continue along um, you know however high up that you want it to go you can do your lip you can do your chin your neck like I had a few here and um, what is important is that you don't pluck them or wax them first because it does need a hair follicle to zone in on that laser to kind of zap the, the root of the hair. So you can go anywhere that you have hair. And right here, every time you push this power button, it'll go higher and higher. Um, and then when you wanna turn it off, you just hold that again. This is the plug that it plugs into the wall with. It doesn't get hot or anything like that, but um, as soon as you make contact, it's gonna try to pulsate that light. So um, as you can see, this nozzle is very small. Um, you can do your legs and other things, but I would imagine that would take forever. But um, I did read people doing that. I find this is really good for targeted areas. So like I did my upper lip, I did my chin, I did some spots on my neck, um, my sideburns. That was money well spent on this just for that because the treatments I would have to get at a laser facility would have been a lot more than that and I can do them from the comfort of my own home and you know it it feels like a little elastic kind of snapping you and it doesn't hurt afterwards so it does take that initial um, like uncomfortable period to get used to it so I would start low and work your way up I think I did like eight or eight to ten treatments with that on my sideburns and as you can see I don't have them anymore I mean occasionally I guess I can feel like maybe a peach fuzzy kind of thing come up there but nothing else comes anymore and nothing got rid of those so next is a peach fuzz on your face now that can attract makeup can cling in it and it just doesn't give you really luminous skin 
So something I use is one of these. It's a little razor and they come in all different colors and kind of, some of them sometimes don't have this angle. They're just completely straight. And it works well if you've just washed your face too and your face has some moisture on it and you wanna make sure that you change these regularly so they can be sharp. I think these are only like a dollar. And what you'd wanna do is go downwards on your face. So wherever it is, and if you can hear that, it'll also scrape off any kind of like dead skin you have on top. But you do this and you don't wanna go against the grain of your face because that will, that will irritate the hair follicle and your skin and that can give you something that kind of looks like razor burn. And I go all the way around like right here. I make this look, look with my lip. I go all the way down and my face is never spiky from this or anything like that. The hair really has almost stopped coming back, but I only do this probably once every few months, not very often. But what this will make is your makeup goes on smoother, your face looks more fresh and dewy. You can do this everywhere, like up on your chin. This won't cut it right. It, this is not like, um, like shaving your face with a razor blade like this. When you're doing right here, I use a man's razor. I absolutely use a man's razor to shave just because I like how many blades they have on here and I feel like the head pivots a little more. I also wear men's deodorant, I'm kind of odd like that. But I like this for shaving legs and like I said, that side area while you're using the tria. You will not notice if it doesn't completely stop the hair growth, a drastic, drastic reduction in there. And so let's use a worst case scenario. Say you use this to get the peach fuzz off your face and you're afraid like some of the myths say that it'll come back stronger and darker. Well, excellent. If it does, you can use the trio to zap it and then it will be gone because the trio will not work if you have like blonde peach fuzz on your face and you're trying to zap it with this, it won't absorb the light because the hair is light. It has to be dark hair. I mean, dark to a certain extent, like light brown or something. The darker the hair, the more likely this is to work. So if you just have that like peach fuzz you can see in the light, that's not gonna help it. It has to be peach fuzz that maybe after you use this to get rid of it, because maybe it's like sun bleached on the top. If it comes back darker, you can zap it with that trio keep it away from tattoos, like I said. These are just the instruments and the tools that I use to defur my face. <laughs> After you're done doing that, I recommend you splash your face with cold water to kind of close up the pores in your face. Um, warm water will open, open pores and cu hair cuticles and things and cold water will shock them shut. It is a little bit of a commitment of time. Um, something that is very important is for any of my girls that do have these that grow down on your face, you wanna make sure that you don't do something crazy like, see I have these right here. Like don't take it completely off. I mean, unless that's what you want because wouldn't that look weird? if there was like absolutely nothing here. So, I mean, you wanna keep it as natural looking as possible. Again, make sure it's not waxed and it's not plucked. Like sometimes if I had like a dark hair on my lip, I would use tweezers to pluck it out, but that's not gonna help the tree, I get it, so. And you know, like now when I take this tria and if I try to zap anything here, it pretty much doesn't hurt. When I first started doing these, Oh my God, the closer up I got here, where the more hairs there were and the more dense it was, it really, really hurt. Now I could do it and I don't really feel anything because there are no active hair follicles there anymore. Again, the Tria is an investment, but something that could be great is, say you get it with a girlfriend. I mean, one of your friends, you guys could split it and just use it on alternating times, you know? You don't need to both be using it at the same time. One could take it like, you know, half the week and you could take it the other half of the week and you could keep kind of switching off until your treatments are done. And that way, each only had to spend, what, 220 on it? If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.